Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today will be just a quick recap or talk about the current situation with AMD versus Intel. You probably remember that I did a video about AMD versus Intel roughly a year ago where I was explaining details that I didn't really have a good relation to Intel after the X299 VRM disaster and in the last year things certainly changed or developed therefore I want to give you an update of my relation with the different vendors and also my view on the current situation of AMD versus Intel the never-ending debate and what I currently think about like the product lineup and also the marketing aspects we got some fluffy support here on my table Sheik will give us some company I have some Xeon Phi, Xeon Phi, I'm not sure what or how you say it in English, but um, I have those coprocessors on my table and I'm currently working on a project and also on videos together with a company from Austria. They are using those things for scientific calculations and they needed help for yeah, improving the thermals. It's just like a pass-through cooler, there is no fan inside, it's just made for sitting in a rack somehow and then relying on the airflow passing through, but if you want to mount it in a normal case, the cooling is not the best and we're currently trying to develop a water cooling unit for them and then if you try to get drivers for those things online, that's certainly difficult. If you didn't get them directly from Intel, it's basically nothing you can find online for the latest generation of those and that's why I want to go over to the part of my current Intel contact because in the previous year it definitely improved. Intel started to have a dedicated contact here in Germany for influencers. I'm not sure if I would call myself an influencer but um, he will manage all the relations to like youtubers and other media therefore he's also taking care of me and i'm very happy with the current situation he was also taking care of like the 10900k launch or like the intel NUC topic which was extremely interesting he was current he was totally open to what i wanted to do because typically you get like a press kit and then they expect you to do the normal review stuff and that's usually not what i like to do and then i told him about that i would try to overclock it and I'm not going to say that I wanted to break it but you try to improve it as much as you can build your own water cooling unit and try to make it kind of more interesting than just having a normal review and he was very open to that and very happy about the content we produced and that's extremely cool also got like direct help with the Xeon Phi therefore yeah I cannot complain much uh, about Intel contact wise that absolutely improved two years ago because in Germany previously People were always working with like a public media agency and the agency was not the best to work with. I mean the, the agency is certainly doing a great job the way they should work but you know how it works if you have like a technical question about Xeon Phi and then you ask a marketing person they will not know the answer themselves they will have to forward it to Intel and then they will probably have to forward it again internally therefore it slows down the process a lot and having a dedicated person who was also a former media himself that certainly helps therefore the relationship with Intel absolutely improved over the last 12 months we're also mainly shooting this video regarding the AMD 3000 XT CPUs some people asked where is your 3800 XT, 3600 XT launch content but I didn't get any CPUs and the reason for that is also because I didn't ask to get any of those CPUs. I now have an AMD contact. I got this contact at the time when I was doing those Ryzen Boost update videos and all those stuff and he's a very good contact, um, always very respectful, good to work with so I cannot complain at all, definitely relation with AMD also improved and I'm sure, I mean, I could have asked for those CPUs certainly but I didn't do it because I just saw the specs of like 3800 XT and then I thought okay it's slightly improved boost and at best you can maybe get improved silicon by like 100 megahertz but it was nothing I was planning to do review content for because usually that's not the type of content I would like to have on my channel like this typically typical I'm running like 10 games and producing benchmarks that's nothing I enjoy therefore I, di I simply didn't want to do those videos there is no much more not much more behind that if you follow YouTube then you always see those videos on Linus Tech Tips and Jace Two Cents where they just ramble about what's going on Intel versus AMD, which of the CPUs should you buy and that's currently probably 
or it has been a bigger question than the last five years, I guess. And that's mainly because those AMD Ryzen 3000 CPUs are just extremely strong. And I'm very happy that this is the case. I'm personally always also recommending them. And it's just interesting if you plainly follow the benches, if you look at them without any emotions, just for example, go to the current um, Gamers Nexus 3800 XT video. And then you look at the gaming benches. Most of the cases, or I think even all of the cases, 10900K is in the lead and then very close behind you have like a 10600K overclocked to I don't know what's it 5 gigahertz or 5.2 gigahertz was certainly close but it was beating all the AMD CPUs at stock. Still it seems to me like most of the people still prefer AMD those days and that's a very interesting development or behavior of the customers I think. Obviously I understand the CPUs are technically on a great level and price performance wise they're also absolutely nice. Still, I'm often asking myself, how do people take the decision on what to buy? I often see those gaming benchmarks and then you see Cinebench R20 and Blender and like Adobe Premiere. And if you look at those production benchmarks, AMD is always leading. AMD is always leading because at the same price point, you get a lot more cores than Intel. And then I'm always wondering, are just people deciding by those production benchmarks or are they thinking about okay for the future you get more cores therefore it should be more safe for the future than having less cores with intel but higher frequency yeah that's that's a very interesting point of the it history right now i think and um, it's not always so clear why people are going for either brand a or either brand b I also often enjoy the discussion about the nanometer size and that's something which is more funny because Intel has been using the 14 nanometer plus 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 for the previous four, five, six years. I cannot even remember, but at least for the last four generations, I think. And those generations have been very, very similar. The CPUs all behave the same. Sometimes you get 200 megahertz more then you get two cores more, but essentially they're all the same. They still feel like Skylake. Like 10900K feels exactly the same like the 6700K years ago. And therefore I can understand if you buy a new PC and you want to play with new tech, then you maybe go for like a seven nanometer CPU. And that's not only by the number, but also because it's a more advanced technology and you maybe have something that is more interesting to play with than having something that has been around for years. And I often see the discussion, why, like, why would you care about nanometers? Certainly you shouldn't, because it doesn't matter at all. If you have your CPU and it performs the way it performs, you don't care if it's 14 nanometer, if it's 7 nanometer or 10 nanometer. But I can totally understand and I can also support that if you have a different technology and it evolves, then you maybe want to play with new tech. And it's the same for me. I mean, if we get an 11900K maybe next year, I'm not sure if that's going to be the name, but if this is again the same CPU, for example, and maybe it's 12 cores, but the same amount of uh, frequency, and then it, was it would just be extremely boring. Even though you get maybe still a CPU which is leading the charts, it's just getting boring. That's the thing. And that's why I hope that Intel will somehow improve will make a completely new architecture maybe and, and we have something new cool to play with because currently it's just getting boring and that's also why I think a lot of people are going for AMD because it's simply the more advanced technology and maybe newer more fun to play with. What I also find interesting is if you ask the vendors themselves or let's say you ask or you talk to people who are working at the vendors they certainly don't reflect always the same opinion of the whole company but they have their personal opinion and then you ask like what do you think about the current Intel and AMD um, debate and Intel doesn't care as much about losing shares in the desktop market than some people think. Some people think Intel is extremely worried but from what I can hear or from what I can feel from the Intel vibes, it feels more like they still focus so much about the mobile market and they still know that they're dominant in the mobile market and they're the leader there. Therefore, they don't care so much about the desktop market, which I think is wrong because that's the market which is making this huge noise inside the whole industry because who cares about laptops? I mean, obviously, if the sales numbers are higher, they make more profit from it. I can understand it from like a business point of view, it makes sense. 
but just the noise you get in the industry, you don't get it from notebooks. Like nobody cares about that. I mean, if you have your mobile CPU, there's not, not much you can do about it. And all the hardware enthusiasts, they're not buying notebooks. They buy their desktop PCs, build them themselves. And that's why you often get the impression that Intel is losing so hard right now, but I think they're still far ahead of AMD when it comes to like just raw profits and stuff. But that could certainly change. And at this point I have to add some more details because my original video was shot already a week ago. I didn't have time to publish it and therefore some things changed and I want to add some more details to the video. First of all, absolutely great video by Linus Tech Tips. He goes into detail about the current H470 and B460 boards from Intel and why it's absolutely stupid that Intel is artificially limiting those boards by capping the memory speed at maximum 2666 or 2933 megahertz, which makes absolutely no sense, especially keeping in mind that Intel is not in the best position to do this right now. If they were far ahead of AMD, fine, do it make people pay more to get like C490 boards so they can also have unlocked memory speed. But in the current situation, I don't see how this makes much sense. Those benchmarks with H470 and B460 boards would definitely benefit from like 3600 C14 memory. And right now, I mean, AMD is allowing overclocking and everything on every single board, even on the cheapest boards. and. Intel is limiting everything. That's something we already experienced in the Intel NUC video, something I already pointed out there that I'm not happy how you can make like an overclocked CPU but limited in terms of boost frequency and power limit and memory speed, which makes no sense. If you buy a 10900K, just allow it to be overclocked and maximum memory speed no matter which board. That's a very stupid decision and great video by Linus Tech Tips. Make sure you go and watch this video. Then I also saw rumors regarding a 10850K, which apparently is coming to the market soon. It's just a rumor, but from what I could see online, it's a 10900K with 100 megahertz lower base frequency. Who exactly is going to need this CPU? I mean, if there is not going to be a massive price difference to the 10900K. I don't see why this CPU should exist. My personal guess would be that they have plenty of 10900K chips, which are not good enough to meet the binning criteria and therefore they just lower the binning criteria and add a 10850K, which can be used for that. I'm not quite sure why you would make the 10850K. And another thing which could be interesting is early September, apparently Intel will announce the new Tiger Lake CPUs. Tiger Lake is 10 nanometer based mobile, should be two, four, maybe six core. I'm not sure if it's going to be six core CPUs. So not that important for us when it comes to the desktop market, but typically when we have those early mobile CPUs, we can get an impression of like IPC increase and clock speed increase and just a look on the new 10 nanometer from Intel. And therefore we can kind of see what we can expect maybe six, seven, eight months later in the desktop market when Rocket Lake will finally make it and hopefully Rocket Lake will be also on the same 10 nanometer process and therefore early September could be interesting regarding Tiger Lake. All right, so much about uh, this general vendor rambling video. Thanks for joining in, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and see you soon.